Sometimes you need to get places quickly or just get a little bit more out of your jumps. A good dash mechanic can help for that. Today we're going to create a dash effect for our player controller using state machines and flow macros. Let's dash through this tutorial. Okay, I'm going to assume that you already have a player controller set up to where you can move back and forth and you can jump. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have your jump function yet, uh, but you at least need to be able to move back and forth and sprinting doesn't hurt. So if you need help with that, you can go back and watch one of the tutorial videos that I've already done. Um, but for now, what we need to do is we need to add a couple variables that we're going to call from our function. So first and foremost, the, the function that we're going to need um, is, uh, let's, let's do a can dashing and dashing speed. So dashing speed, and for right now, we're going to set that, uh, let's set that at 5,000. And I know that sounds like a lot, but uh, it's actually just adding force, so it needs to be high. And uh, we also need a can dash bool. So we're going to be calling this in our function to determine whether or not we can dash. We don't want to just be able to hit the dash button as many times as we can to get uh, dashing all over the place. We, we want to put a little cooldown on it and you can determine how long you want that cooldown to be in the script. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to set up uh, a state machine or if you already have one, um, I'm going to go to macros and under my player macros I have one called player health. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rename that player states. And we're going to set up two new states in here. Let's create a flow state and call it dashing. And let's create another flow and call it uh, not dashing. Actually, let's uh, flip those around because not dashing needs to be what we start and dashing needs to be what we go to and come back to. All right, so uh, right click the not dashing and toggle start on that one and then make a transition between the two of these. And uh, that's going to be what we need for that. Okay, first things first, let's go into the dashing macro and we are actually going to get rid of the update and the leaving. Um, and so the first thing we need to do is we need to get our direction. So whenever we hit our dash button, it's always pushing us in the right direction. So um, just go over to the right a little bit here and let's do input get axis. And we are going to say horizontal on that. So we're gonna be checking which direction we're facing. Uh, let's do greater, Oops, greater than, oh, here we go, greater. If it's greater than zero, then we need something to happen. So let's bring that up to a branch. And um, if it's greater than zero, we need to set variable. I believe it's an object variable. Nope, sorry, it's a graph variable. And we're going to set direction. So this will even create that if you don't have it already. Um, and we're going to set the direction as one. So if, when we check the horizontal axis, if we're facing left, it's gonna be negative. If we're facing right, it's gonna be positive. If it's positive, if A is greater than zero, then we're going to set our flow as one. If it is negative, let's, uh, let's just copy this and replace it here or, or paste another one right there. And if it's false, we need to set this as negative one. The reason we're doing that is because we're going to multiply this number times the force. So the direction times our force push in uh, a certain way, so on the X. Okay, next let's look at the dash function, uh, what actually moves our character. What we're going to do out of these two is we're going to run both of them into a rigid body 2D uh, velocity and we're going to set our velocity. And the reason why we're doing this is because, you don't have to do this, this little part right here, but the reason I'm doing that is because when I dash, if I dash in the air, I want to stop the falling or I want to stop the rising. I just want to dash in a straight line. And so that's what this is going to do. This is going to set my X and my Y to zero. And when it does that, I, I 
I, I kind of worked this out a little bit. I, it took me several days to get this just the way that I wanted it. Uh, you might um, find that you don't want the mid-air dash, but in order to get that, what I'm gonna have to do just temporarily is I'm going to have to mess with the gravity scales. Go, uh, go to rigid body, 2D, and um, gravity, gravity scale set. And just temporarily, we're gonna set that to zero. While it's in the air, we don't want it going up or down. We just want it to stay constant in the air. And then we're going to add the force to uh, the player object. So add force, we need a rigid body 2D, add force, and let's, you could you could just do force if you wanted, but uh, I'll show you the difference in, in impulse and force. Uh, or actually, I think I've already shown you that in a different video. So. Um, you can go back and watch that. Vector 2, either that or you can play with it if you like. Um, so I need a Vector 2, uh, I need a new, nope, not a new Vector 2, I need a XY Vector 2. There we go, new XY. And what this is going to do is this is going to multiply our direction that we set up just right over here times our dash speed, and that's how much force we're going to throw into our X variable. So it's going to dash this in a direction. Okay, and so off of the X, let's set that, let's multiply that by our direction. So get graph variable direction and multiply that by our dash speed, or whatever variable you had your set up as get object variable, whatever the name of it was. Uh, you have to type that in here. So dash speed, or what did I do? Dash speed or dash force? Dashing speed. So let me change that to dash speed so I don't have to change that back in that state. So just change that to dash speed. Uh, by the way, set your override, uh, apply all, apply that to your, your player all the way across your levels. So going back to the player states, I'm going to open up the dashing. And uh, I did forget one little thing. You need to just attach this right here. So that'll all light up for you now. Um, and what I need to do after I launch the dash speed times direction into the X on add force, the last thing that I need to do is I need to set uh, object variable. I need to set the can dash to false. So that this is what's going to give us our, our little uh, cooldown. So just really quickly, let's um, just put a, um, a group on this just to make sure we don't lose track of anything. And this one is going to be directional check. And this one right over here is going to be dash function. Okay, so going back to our player controller um, state here, um, we are going to click on this transition from not dashing to dashing, and we just need to set up a custom event. Um, all right, so what we're doing is we're setting up our own little custom events so that we can call that from a different place in our player controller. So for example, when we hit the dash button, we need to be dashing. And whenever we hit the button, it's going to trigger the dashing state. Okay, so once we're done with the dashing state, we need to go to not dashing, and we want to reset our um, we want to reset our uh, gravity after a certain amount of time. And the, the time that I figured out to do that, so go on inner state. And again, you can work you can work with these however you like. Uh, this is just what works for me. This needs to be set as a coroutine, so make sure you check that little box while you have on state enter clicked. And uh, let's do a wait timer. So wait for seconds. And we're going to, after 0.1 seconds, we're going to reset our gravity as we go back into the next transition. So going to not dashing now, now we need to set up our uh, gravity back to, to normal and we need to set our uh, can dash variable back to on so that we know that they can dash again. So again, you, you just set this up 
uh, according to the timer that you want, this is what I have set up. So we're gonna go to rigid, body, 2D, uh, gravity, scale, set, and we're gonna set that back to what we already had it at, which on my character I had it set to three. And uh, then we're going to wait for one second. So wait for one second. Anytime you have a wait timer, this on state enter needs to be set as a coroutine or whatever button that is pressing that needs to be set as a coroutine or it won't work. So go to set variable, set object variable, can dash back to true. So now after one second, we'll be able to dash again. Okay, now that we have our dash set up, we need to be calling that in our player controller. And I'm gonna go ahead and set mine up inside the movement super unit that I have. So this uh, checks for whether or not I can sprint, sets my sprint speed. I can calculate my movement, determining um, you know my speed times whatever direction I'm on. And then it puts it into my player controller and moves it. So this is a pretty standard uh, player controller. Uh, but I, I'm gonna call uh, the movement, which is right here. I'm gonna call that little graph variable, which is why I'm putting it inside the, uh, the movement uh, super unit and not getting my own super unit. So I'm, I'm, because I'm gonna call that function, that graph function, uh, I need to set it up in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up right now. Okay, so whenever I call my dash button, then I'm going to want to trigger that uh, custom event. So go to on button input. And we're going to say, whenever I hit the dash button, which we're gonna to have to set that up here in just a minute, so you can set that to whatever button you like. Whenever I set that, and we're gonna need a branch here because uh, we need to check and see whether our get variable, whether our object variable uh, can dash is actually true. So can dash, or whatever you name that, mine is can dash okay so um, when we when we push the dash button and the the bool is set to true then we can dash so we're going to go down here and uh, we're going to need to only dash whenever we're not moving you if you want to do it when you're moving you can certainly set it up that way this is the way I have mine set up uh, that I can only dash whenever I'm moving in a direction and in order to do that I'm going to check whether or not my movement is equal to zero, which is why uh, I needed to set it up inside my movement controller because I'm getting that variable. So uh, let's do not equal whenever my movement um, get variable, get uh, graph variable, whenever my movement is not zero. Whenever my movement is not zero, then I can dash. So even if I have my dash bool set to yes, um, but I'm not moving, I don't want to dash. So whenever I'm, whenever I have my can dash and I am moving, then I'm going to uh, call custom event. I'm gonna call that custom event, and I believe I called that dashing. Go back and double check that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our dash button real quick. If you go to edit and go to project settings, you can go to your input manager and I'm gonna need to set up yet another button and we're gonna call that uh, dashing. Or what do we call that dash? Call that dash, this is what we got right down there. All right, so for my dash button, I wanna set that to the letter F. Oh, it's gotta be lowercase, F, there we go. So I need to set that to, to F. You can set that whatever you want. I think that's a good place because it's right next to WASD. So uh, if you want a Q or R or whatever, just put that in there for that. So when we press the dash button, we should trigger from one state to the next. Let's check it and see if it works. Okay. So you see a little jerk there. You, you are actually getting a dash there. All right, so it's working. If you want to turn that up, you can turn it up right here. Okay, you now have a dash function in your game without a single line of code. But maybe your dash feels a little lame without animation. If only someone made a tutorial video for how to do that.